Hi, I'm Cory, and I'm going to paint a zombie in this video for a very late Halloween episode, or an incredibly early one. I want to up my OSL skills so it doesn't look like I just blast my light sources with a paint blunderbuss. I'm starting off by blasting a bright green and yellow from the front and a very dark blue anywhere the light wouldn't hit. I'm going to throw the paints into the comments in case you need any of this stuff. I set up the same colors I used for the lighting on the palette. And what I'm going to do is mix that into basically everything I paint, like this sickly brown for the skin, depending if it's in the light or the dark. The ratio might change depending on the intensity of the pigment, but it'll ensure we can highlight our colors while maintaining the saturation from the light. The leather moves from a dark chocolate up to a rusty orange, like you normally do with leather, but I find I need to add a bit more pigment to the blue side of things, otherwise it ends up getting so overpowered you can barely see the contrast. Without breaking down every single thing that I paint, I move around doing the same thing I did for the skin and the leather on all the other elements of the model. The hardest thing I find is having the discipline to leave the shadows alone and not paint absolutely everything. Otherwise the effects would be lost and we might as well just paint it like a standard miniature would be painted. I don't think I've done copper non-metallic metal before, so why not make the first time extra complicated by subtly adjusting the lighting? Same thing though, um, I'll say this. If I did this again, I'd add more green. It's too subtle and I end up having to fix it later. I always do this thing in videos where I don't paint smart because I want everything to look good at every stage for the video. And that's not how painting works, not realistically. So I'm gonna do it how I actually do it. I start making harsh distinguishments between light and shadow. And a little secret here, it's gonna look like junk, you know, until it doesn't. Then 
that shovel is looking really rough, but you know, hold your position, soldiers. If we break, they'll overrun us. Plant your spears, hold fast. We'll get there. Just kind of looks like rot and Pepto-Bismol right now. You see that? You see that little droplet of water waiting at the bottom of my brush? I see you waiting in the shadows. I swear to God, I'll paint another 30 years and I'll still have little droplets of water run down my brush, splash onto the model and just ruin everything. Like I'll never, I'll never get the discipline to remember to wick them off of my brush. Painting in those extreme shadows is pretty much always necessary for metal. One thing I think I could have done better is added more of a red or ruddy tone from the start for the mid-tones. I'm able to touch it up somewhat, uh, but something to note for next time. Unhappy, I blast the shovel from the angle of the light source with the lightest airbrush spray I think I've ever done because I'm sick of glazing and I just need a touch of green. Anytime you do that, however, you need to head back in and brighten up those reflection points or it won't read as reflective. I do the same thing for the shadowed parts of the copper, like the back of the shovel, but this time I add more orange to my mids to start. I spend a fair bit of time mixing colors until I'm happy with it. I want to try really pushing the orange on the back as there's less severe light being reflected and thus the mid-tone would be more represented. If you'll notice, I don't end up having to do as much glazing as I normally do, because if you block in the high, mid, and low tones, that's ideally only two transitions where you actually need to blend, instead of going back and forth all the time and touching up and correcting. You don't want things to be a completely mechanical and thoughtless process, but keeping some of those things consistent can really help move your painting along. probably should have done the texture on the base before painting or at least used gloves here. It's absolutely degenerate behavior on my part, being so irresponsible. Next thing you know, I'll be putting forks the wrong way in the dishwasher or putting my socks away without folding them.
Time to use the kind of pricey snow terrain effects I convinced my wife we needed to buy for our kids' school diorama with the full intention of just using them myself for hobby stuff. But it's okay. I don't think she watches these videos this far, so I'm probably going to get away with it. But I guess we'll find out how supportive you really are. These sparkle beads honestly don't make a big difference. I probably wouldn't buy them uh, again, but you, it does kind of help a little bit and I do love a good gimmick. I hummed and hawed over this, but decided I wanted some verdigris, verdigris. And oil paint really is easy mode for that process. There's barely any blending or fussing, and it's just a quick way to zhuzh up metals and cover up your mistakes. Let's look at the final result. 